Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our afternoon read aloud. Today, I'm going to read chapter 18. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you enjoy watching them as much as I enjoy doing them. Doing these read alouds, it's like my favorite part of teaching. I have so many favorite parts, but this is one of my favorites, especially. And thank you for watching. I try to keep them short. I try to do my voices, try to keep it fun. Uh, we're getting close to the end of our story. Where we left off, they're at the fair! That's right, our characters are at the fair. Wilbur is trying to win a prize, and they just saw his competition. They just saw who he's going against, and it's a bigger pig. His name is Uncle, and he's bigger than Wilbur. So now, Wilbur's worried he's not gonna win. Charlotte, though, is there, and she has a plan. I'm predicting Charlotte's gonna write another message in the web, and that's gonna help Wilbur win first prize. So, I'm also wondering, so what if Wilbur wins second prize? Does that mean Mr. Zuckerman will eat him? Will Mr. Zuckerman eat him even if he wins first prize? That's our big problem here. It's Wilbur's life is on the line. I'm not sure if second or first prize is even going to matter. Because remember, Mr. Arable said, Oh, Homer, that pig is going to be tasty when it comes time to eat him. So they're still planning on eating poor Wilbur. And another little detail that I have noticed is Charlotte seems extra tired. And she keeps talking about how tired she is. A little bit um, strange. And there's another hint in this chapter. So pay close attention and see if you can spot the hint that Charlotte gives us that something may be wrong. So the title of this chapter is The Cool of the Evening. In the cool of the evening, when shadows darkened the fairgrounds, Templeton crept from the crate and looked around. Wilbur lay asleep in the straw. Charlotte was building a web. Templeton's neen, keen nose detected many fine smells in the air. The rat was hungry and thirsty. He decided to go exploring without saying anything to anybody. He started off. Bring me back a word, Charlotte called after him. I shall be writing tonight for the last time. What does that mean? Is that a hint? Let's read it again. I'll be writing tonight for the last time. Now remember, the rat goes and gets Charlotte words to put in the web because Charlotte doesn't know how to spell them. And the rat goes into the dump and goes into the garbage and finds little pieces of magazines and advertisements and brings them back and Charlotte puts them in her web. I'm wondering, why did Charlotte say, I'm going to write a word for the last time? That sounds very ominous. On, um, ominous? Is that the right way to say it? I don't know. Okay. The rat mumbled something to himself and disappeared into the shadows. He did not like being treated like a messenger boy. After the heat of the day, the evening came as welcome relief to all. The Ferris wheel was litted, lit, lighted now. It went round and around in the sky and seemed twice as high as by day. There were lights on the midway and you could hear the crackle of the gambling machines and the music of the merry-go-round and the voice of the man in the Beano booth calling numbers. The children felt refreshed after their nap. Fern met her friend, Henry Fussy, and he invited her to ride with him in the Ferris wheel. He even bought a ticket for her so it didn't cost her anything. When Mrs. Arable happened to look up in the starry sky and saw her little daughter sitting with Henry Fussy and going higher and higher into the air and saw how happy Fern looked, she just shook her head. My, my, she said, Henry Fussy, will you think of that? So look at Fern going on a date with little Henry Fussy. Henry Fussy was a gentleman. He bought the ticket for Fern, and they're going on the Ferris wheel. So I don't know if her mom is happy. I think she is. Fern's going on a little date. She's interested in boys now. I don't know. I still think she's a little young to be interested in boys, but that's what kids do, right? Templeton kept out of sight. In the tall grass behind the cattle barn, he found a folded newspaper. Inside of it were leftovers from somebody's lunch, a deviled ham sandwich, a piece of Swiss cheese, part of a hard-boiled egg, and the core of a wormy apple. The rat crawled in and ate everything. Then he tore a word out of the paper, rolled it up, and started back to Wilbur's pen. Charlotte had her web almost finished when Templeton returned, carrying the newspaper clipping. She had left a space in the middle of her web. At this hour, no people were around in the pig pen, so the rat and the spider and the pig were by themselves. So Templeton... 
Remember, a fair is a rat's paradise. And you saw that big, uh, video of Templeton singing his song. He's in heaven. He loves the fair. Because of all the garbage and scraps. And he brought back a piece of a paper. I hope you brought a good one, Charlotte said. It is the last word I shall ever write. There's another hint. The last word? What's happening, Charlotte? Why is it going to be the last word? Here, said Templeton, unrolling the paper. What does it say? asked Charlotte. You'll have to read it to me. It says, humble, replied the rat. Humble, said Charlotte. Humble has two meanings. It means not proud, and it means near the ground. That's Wilbur all over. He's not proud, and he's near the ground. Well, I hope you're satisfied, sneered the rat. I'm not going to spend all of my time fetching and carrying... I came to this fair to enjoy myself, not to deliver papers. You've been very helpful, Charlotte said. Run along if you want to see more of the fair. The rat grinned. I'm going to make a night of it, he said. The old sheep was right. This fair is a rat's paradise. What eating and what drinking and everywhere good hiding and good hunting. Bye-bye, my humble Wilbur. Fare thee well, Charlotte, you old schemer. This will be the night to remember in a rat's life. So Templeton is excited. He's going off into the night. And that was that video you watched. And what is the word that he brought back? Humble. And if you don't know what humble means, it means you're not a bragger. You're not too proud. It is a good thing to be humble. That means you're not showing off and you're not bragging. And it also has another meaning, meaning close to the ground. That meaning is not really used as much. When I think of humble, I mean it means that you don't brag or boast. You're not too proud. And that's a good thing. You should try to be humble, especially if you're talented at something. You should be humble about it. Don't be a show off. So sometimes words have two meanings and humble does. Charlotte likes the word. She's going to put it in the web. And she said, the last word I'll ever write. Another hint. Something's going on with Charlotte. I can tell because I'm a close reader. And I'm always thinking. And there's something wrong with Charlotte. And now Templeton's going off. Okay, we're almost done. He vanished into the shadows. Charlotte went back to her work. It was quite dark now. In the distance, fireworks began going off. Rockets scattering fiery balls in the sky. By the time the Arables and the Zuckermans and Lurvy returned from the grandstand, Charlotte had finished her web. The word humble was woven neatly in the center. Nobody noticed it in the darkness. Everyone was tired and happy. Fern and Avery climbed into the truck and laid down. They pulled the Indian blanket over them. Lurvy gave Wilbur a forkful of fresh straw. Mr. Arable patted him. Time for us to go home, he said to the pig. I'll see you tomorrow. The grown-ups climbed slowly into the truck and Wilbur heard the engine start. And then he heard the truck moving away in a low speed. He would have felt lonely and homesick had Charlotte not been with him. He never felt lonely when she was near. In the distance, he could still hear the music of the merry-go-round. As he was dropping off to sleep, he spoke to Charlotte. Sing me a song again about the dong in the dark, he begged. Not tonight, she said in a low voice. I'm too tired. Her voice didn't, didn't seem to come from her web. Where are you? asked Wilbur. I can't see you. Are you on your web? I'm back here, she answered, up in the back corner. Why aren't you on your web? asked Wilbur. You almost never leave your web. I've left it tonight, she said. Wilbur closed his eyes. Charlotte, he said after a while. Do you really think Zuckerman will, will let me live and not kill me when the cold weather comes? Do you really think so? Of course, said Charlotte. You are a famous pig, and you are a good pig. Tomorrow you will probably win a prize. The whole world will hear about you. Zuckerman will be so proud and happy to own such a pig. You will have nothing to fear, Wilbur. Nothing to worry about. Maybe you'll live forever. Who knows? And now, go to sleep. For a while there was no sound. Then Wilbur's voice. What are you doing up there, Charlotte? Oh, I'm making something, she said. Making something as usual. Is it something for me? asked Wilbur. No, said Charlotte. It's something for me. For a change. Please tell me what it is, begged Wilbur. I'll tell you in the morning, she said. When the first light comes into the sky and the sparrows stir and the cows rattle their chains, when the rooster crows and the stars fade, when the early cars whisper along the highway, you will look up here and I will show you something. I will show you my masterpiece. Before she finished the sentence, Wilbur was asleep. 
She could tell by the sound of his breathing that he was sleeping peacefully, deep in the straw. Miles away at the Arable's house, the men sat around the kitchen table eating a dish of canned peaches and talking over the events of the day. Upstairs, Avery was already in bed and asleep. Mrs. Arable was tucking Fern into bed. Did you have a good time at the fair? She asked as she kissed her daughter. Fern nodded. I had the best time ever. I have ever had anywhere or any time in my whole life. Well, said Mrs. Arable, isn't that nice? That's the end of our chapter. We learned a couple of things. Templeton's having a great time at the fair. It's gonna be a night to remember for this rat. Charlotte is super tired and she's doing something different. Wilbur said, what are you doing, Charlotte? And Charlotte said, I'm doing something for myself for a change. She's always doing things for Wilbur and that bothers me about Wilbur. He is only worried, he's worried about himself too much. And Charlotte does so much for him, he should be more grateful. But Charlotte's doing something for herself in the corner, not in her web. So I'm asking the question, what is she doing up there? Why is she so tired? What's wrong with Charlotte? Also, I'm wondering about Wilbur. He is still anxious, but Charlotte said, you could, you'll live forever. So this book deals a lot with life and death. That's such a serious um, theme in this book, but it's important to talk about and think about. So feel free to talk about this with your family or, you know, talk about it with me during a meeting. I would love to hear what you think. Keep on watching these read alouds. Watch me bop around and move my hands because I don't know how to sit still. I would seem like a robot. Anyway, have a great afternoon. Watch tomorrow. I'll read the next chapter. We're getting close to the end. Thanks for watching.